This is Life For You, the first TV magazine in Second Life, with Kira Singh and Christoph Broom. Life For You is a proud media partner of the Metaverse European Second Life Conference and Expo, taking place on November 19th and 20th in Munich. You want to join? Get all the information you need under www.metaverse07.com. Hello, Second Lifers, and welcome to Life For You. We are the definitive guide to what's hot and happening in Second Life. Let's take a look at the top stories this week. The military regime in Burma strikes against peaceful protesters, and hundreds of Second Life residents show their support on dozens of sims throughout the grid. Value-added tax hits the small European entrepreneur hard. In RL and also now in SL, we'll talk to one affected business owner. And the Burning Life Festival comes to a spectacular close in SL. We were there with our clothes on, of course. 90% of the 55 million people who live in Burma survive on less than one U.S. dollar a day. The country achieved independence from British colonial rule just after the Second World War, and its multi-ethnic society has struggled with nation-building ever since. The history of Burma is complex. It's been under military rule since 1962, and peaceful protests over the years have been met with brutal force. Including the protests that took place in the last couple of months. Draxter Dupre reports on the overwhelming response from the SL community to this RL crisis. Burma, or Myanmar, is a country in Southeast Asia, just south of China. In August, some 400 people led a demonstration in the capital city Rangoon after the government increased fuel prices, causing the costs of transportation and basic goods to skyrocket. The military used force against demonstrators, and in late September, news of a Japanese photographer killed shocked the world. Side by side with the starving population, tens of thousands of Buddhist monks participate in the protests. The monks are extremely important. There are more than 400,000. There are almost as many as there are soldiers. There are some young Burmese men who would go into the monkhood for two or three years. So it is very closely linked with the general community. It is deeply unpopular when monks are beaten up, attacked, and perhaps killed, as we have seen in the last few days. That was Simon Long of The Economist magazine talking on National Public Radio's On Point. In Second Life, communities were quick to organize rallies in support of the Burmese pro-democracy demonstrators, including a sit-in at the Burning Life Festival. Juliet Chambers and her Mooney group were behind the virtual protest. Organizing such an event was a first for her. Second Life was a game for me. I never thought about organizing anything like this. You usually think you're too small to do anything, but in Second Life it's possible. On the Austrian Sims, the Odyssey Arts community, as well as the Commonwealth Islands, hundreds of avatars formed human chains to support protests in Burma last weekend. Vivian Kazavets leads a meditation group in SL and works with the Dharma Prison Network in RL. I very quickly set up the chain, put out the boxes, and then I I end all the groups that I'm in, which is like 25 groups, and within half an hour, you know, several hundred or so people were here. That kept on for eight hours throughout the day. I mean, I don't know. We probably had 500 or more people come to it. The military junta in Burma has severely restricted phone and internet access to and from the country. Many Burmese bloggers are risking their lives to get information out about the violence perpetrated on the demonstrators. Again, Simon Long from The Economist. One imagines that there are many ordinary soldiers who are appalled at what is going on. On the other hand, it is very much divided now between the army and the people, and the army have the guns, and if the leadership orders them to shoot, so far they've been prepared to shoot. A UN envoy has been allowed to visit pro-democracy activist Aung San Suu Kyi, who has been under house arrest for 12 of the last 18 years. Suu Kyi has never been able to serve as prime minister despite having won 60% of the popular vote in 1990. While the impact of the global outcry and UN efforts remain to be seen, at least Second Life has proven once again it can offer more than just escapist fare. Juliet Chambers is convinced that the energy and momentum in SL can be channeled into discussing other areas of conflict in the world. The group is there and why not Iraq? Why not Iran? Why not North Korea? Why not, I don't know, China? It would be a great chance to show people that a different place is possible, a different world is possible. 
for Life for You News. I'm Drexter Dupre. Thanks, Draxter. And also a big thanks to Dizzy Banjo, Miralee Monroe, and Anchor Quintus for their additional footage. And now, the other virtual news in brief. Presented by SL Info, the community in Second Life. VAT in SL. As of last Friday, Second Life users living in the European Union will have to pay value-added tax, or VAT, the equivalent of sales tax in the States. The fee, which could be as high as 25%, will be applied to any type of transactions SL residents have with Linden Lab directly. The news caused widespread discontent among Second Lifers, and many accusing the Lindens of implementing a country-specific price hike unfairly affecting EU citizens. Protesters converged on Linden Village Tuesday to address the issue with company rep Robin Linden, who insisted that the company had to comply with applicable law. Later on Life For You, our senior reporter Marmaduke Myrtle will sit down with one outraged citizen who argues the VAT tax creates unfair competition and is destined to kill off many small businesses. Stay tuned for this special report. WebCuts 07. WebCuts is the international festival for internet films in Berlin. The best internet films from around the world are presented to an international audience during October 2007 in a big cinema in Berlin and via live stream on the web. The declaration period is unfortunately over, but you have the chance to watch the show in World 2. Visit the Cinerama on Idea Virtual Island, IVI, on October the 11th, 11 o'clock a.m. in World Time and 8 o'clock p.m. MESZ. Be bewitched. SL Talks first paper magazine. Germany's first business magazine for Second Life is out now. Andreas Mertens and his SL Talk magazine deal with the possibilities of marketing and the integration of e-business processes in virtual worlds. As well, the magazine provides information about a new system designed to measure the success of your appearance in virtual worlds. You can get this magazine online or at your local kiosk. Vodafone inspires with new technology. After a long wait, Vodafone now has its own diversified and sporty sim, Vodafone Island. A sound garden, an ice skating park, lots of interesting buildings, a 200-meter diving platform, butterflies for a ride, goodies. But they also give you a tool to send and receive SMS in and from the real world. Take the HUD on the sim, activate it via the Vodafone homepage in World Wide Web, and send SMS. Jubilee Party in Second Life. KDW, which in German is short for Department Store of the West, is the most famous and most historical high-end department store in Berlin. This year, the KDW is celebrating its 100th birthday with a presentation in Second Life. Screens inside the building and streaming in and out of Second Life may confuse some visitors, but it shows the intelligent and timeless management and importance of this shopping mall, not to mention 100 years of German history in Berlin. The opening party will take place on October 10th at 9 p.m. Central European Time, which means at 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. 